let me uh let me tease you a little bit <laughs> a thousand percent okay well um what made me come to islam really to be honest um i had this intense very very intense feeling of uh of seeking allah you know i really wanted to get close to allah but i really didn't know uh, my background is Christianity, so uh, I had confusion about, about whether, you know, Christianity is the right one or uh, Islam is the right one. So I asked my dad, uh, when my dad came here to the States to visit me, uh, he pretty much told me, don't worry about religion, just focus on your relationship with the Creator. Um, so I said, okay, that sounds good. So at that point, uh, I just focused my research on Jesus, Isa alayhi salam. Uh, so is he a prophet or is he God? That kind of took me a while. And at one point, I used to go to church and then I would go to masjid, you know, investigating, searching, asking questions. Is my cusk still clear or am I uh, disconnected? Okay. So one of the things uh, that stuck in my mind is that when I went to the church, uh, it's the Eastern Orthodox Church, and I asked the priest. Uh, I was interested in having the priest and the imam from the masjid to sit together, and I would interview them both. I would ask them questions, you know. You know how they do it, like for the presidential election. You know the, uh, you know, uh, news guy. I guess the. I don't know how to. NBC or whatever. You know, he would ask questions to Obama and McCain back and forth. I, I was gonna do that. So, when I asked the priest, his face changed. His voice got loud. He just got annoyed. You know and. He, he was like, word to word, it's like, Islam, Islam is a religion that if you don't become a Muslim, cut your head off. I was like, what? That's not my question. Just, you know, that's not what I asked. Can you do it or not, you know? So I just didn't like that. I just felt like that is a negative response. So I said, okay, never mind, you know. I went to the masjid, I asked the imam the same question, and the imam said, uh, just bring your questions on a piece of paper. Uh, he didn't want to sit with the Christian priest, you know, he wanted, you know, he didn't want the situation to be tense and stuff, I guess. So he just said, bring the questions on a paper. So I like that approach, actually. So I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. So, um... So now I went to uh, I went to um, to the priest one day, and uh, I was just watching. I was in the back. I sat down, and when I saw this brother, he came and he started praying. And uh, when he went for sujood, I was like, man, that's how I want to pray. You know, I got really jealous. You know, that got me in the heart. So I was very like, I mean, I, I want to pray like that. So um, so I, I picked the Quran and uh, I tried to read it, but that didn't go well. Uh, this brother came out of nowhere. He snatched the Quran from me and he says, I, I you know, I, I understand because, you know, I didn't have wudu and I'm not Muslim. He didn't want me to touch the Quran. So he went and he gave me the the English version. So I say, oh, okay, I, I guess I didn't know. I didn't get offended like that. I just say, you know, I, I guess I did what I was not supposed to do. So, um, you know, there's so many things that happened. You know, I can go on and on and on, but it would take hours, you know, if I tell you, like, what, what happened at that point. But I really believe that, um, to be honest, I mean, I just I just uh, wanted to get close to Allah and uh, he just in many different ways like with even within my family 
two people had the same dream and a different day that kind of confused them, you know, and they were scared. And uh, they didn't want to tell me the dream, but then, you know, later on, come to find out, the dream had a very strong message. So, you know, I mean, I really believe that, you know, for me, what what brought me to Islam, I, I did not investigate Quran like that. I did not read Hadith. Um, I really, you know, seek Allah, you know, I used to pray. I didn't even know how to pray, to be honest, you know. And uh, I remember I used to pray, uh, oh, oh, oh God, just show me the right path, you know. I used to ask Him, show me the light. That's that's all I used to pray, nothing else. I never said, give me Jannah. I never said, forgive me my sins. None of that. I only said, show me the right path, you know. And subhanAllah, after I become Muslim, I, f I come to know that Al-Fatha is about Sirat al-Mustaqeen, you know, straight path. And that kind of coincided with what I used to say. And uh, I never knew such thing about Nur and Islam, and I used to ask for light. And now, Alhamdulillah, when people see me with a beard, they say, oh, mashallah, you got Nur, you know. I say, Alhamdulillah, you know. Uh, so, the hadith, uh, is it hadith? No, I think it's an ayah in Quran where Allah says, if you walk to me, I will come running to you. That has been more than fulfilled for me. I mean, I just asked Allah and boom, just like that. And even if I don't want, my legs will disobey me and they will obey Allah anyways, you know. Uh, a couple of times, you know, I got upset at the masjid because... People are not following Sunnah. So I say, forget about it. I'm not going to the masjid. I'm just going to lock the door and pray in the house. And next thing I know, boom. My legs just keep taking me to the masjid. So it's not even up to me anymore. It's just Allah just does whatever He wills. And I just, I just cooperate with that, you know. But one of the things that I like to emphasize here is maybe I am... When I first became Muslim, people were like, Oh, don't be extremist. You're just being extremist, you know. I'm like, no, I'm just trying to follow Islam. Islam says this, so I have to do that, you know. Uh, so, uh, I notice a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, brothers and sisters who are Islam by birth, like meaning by culture or by family, they tend to take it easy, you know, and... Yes, Islam is supposed to be an easy religion on you because Allah does not want to burden you, you know. But at the same time, we have to uh, stick to the sunnah of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I've been in the deen now two years. This is my third Ramadan. June 8th would be my third year. June 8th of uh, 2010. So, um, so uh, anyways, uh, the, the time and the minute... Uh, that that did it also was when I was uh, searching about Isa salam whether he is God or whether he was he was uh, a prophet. Uh, it was Thursday, I believe it was Thursday or Friday. It has to be one of those days, and it was around ten o'clock a.m. And I was laying in my bed and I was, you know, you know sometimes when you lay on your bed and you look at the ceiling. I was looking at the ceiling and uh, I'm thinking and uh, boom, it came to me. And it was, it was saying pretty much, uh, that Isa, it took me to the Bible actually and uh, it said, um, it was just this, this voice or this thought on my mind that is saying this uh, remember when when uh, Isa in the Bible actually this is uh, somewhere I forgot where it was the reference in Luke I guess uh, Isa alayhi salam he fasted for 40 days and then after 40 days he was taken to the desert and he was tempted by Iblis anyone in this room know the story? give me one one if you know it Okay, so, uh, I'll just fast forward then, you know. So, the third test that Iblis gave to, uh, 
to Isa a.s. was he took him to the highest mountain and showed him the earth and he said you see all this all this world and Isa said yeah I'm just you know uh, paraphrasing it I'm not quoting word by word so he said um, well if you bow down to me and worship me I will give you everything you see and Isa said it is written that you should worship your Lord alone. This is what he said. So he, I said to myself, wait a second. If, if Isa is, is God, how come he said that back to, Isa, to Iblis? He should have said, no, you're wrong. I am God. You should worship me. What are you, crazy? You think uh, you, you want me to worship you? You got to worship me because I am God. Isa uh, uh, would have replied that, but Isa said, "It is written that you should worship your your uh, Lord alone." So I was like, "Wait a second. I jumped with my bed like you won't believe. I just sprinted back like it's, it is like a military drill, you know. I was like, I went next room. My brothers were there, and I stuck my head in the room and I said, "I got it, I got it, I got it." They looked at me like, what's wrong with him? After that, I really, I was 100% sold. I said, Islam is the way. So what do I do next? I go to a Senegalese store. I bought my white jalabia. You know, now I got, I got to get the uniform, you know. And I start attending, going to the masjid. I would attend, uh, I would attend uh, the khutbah. But I didn't know, I mean, that you have to give shahada, I didn't know that you have to make wudu, none of this, I have no idea. I just go there, I I just mix with the crowd, prayer time, I just get in a row, I just pray. So, um, so one day, I was, this was like a couple of weeks, I'm in the khutbah, and this guy, he see me, and he says, uh, he thinks, oh, that brother, he is one of the, 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 the brothers who follow Sunnah because he see me with the Jalabia. And I never really like to shave my beard. I don't have it as, as long as right now, but I had like some beard, you know. So, uh, he comes after the khutbah and he goes, As-salamu and he starts talking to me. So I tell him, uh, no, I'm not a Muslim. And he got confused. He was like, you have Jalabiyah? You pray? Khutbah? You tell him you're not Muslim? He just got confused. But me at that point, I thought, you know, to be a Muslim, you have to be born like from a Muslim family. You know, I didn't know that I can be a Muslim. I thought, you know, I agree with Islam and everything. I wish I could be a Muslim, but I didn't know, you know. So he got confused. So next week, he see me again, so he he followed me, and uh, at that point you know, I'm trying to get something to eat. So I say, you know, let's eat. He goes, nah, I'm okay. He just tagging along with me, and I, you know, this uh, uh, this is in the school, and they have this thing in the basement pool table. They sell alcohol there too. So I just went there because you know there's a, a TV that we watch soccer games and tables. So I'm there eating and he started giving me advanced high speed accelerated da'wah. So he keeps telling me, telling me and telling me. I was like, wait a second, you don't need to tell me. I mean, I, I think Islam is the right religion. And he started telling me about Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So at that point, I really don't know anything about Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So I said, oh Rasul, if Rasul said, believe in Allah, believe in God, he must be a nice person. This is how I took it, really. I have no problem with him. If he said, believe in God, it's good, you know? So he goes, come on, come on, you gotta give shahada right now, right now. So I say, what's shahada? Say, ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Because if you don't say that, you go out, a, a, a bus hits you, there's no chance for you. So I say, that's it? I say, yeah. So I say it. So he tapped me on my shoulder, but I really didn't feel like, you know, I was expecting like to be a Muslim, you got to get through some transformation, like, you know, for Christians, they get in the water, they come out, 
there's a big cross maybe on their head and all these things. Something like that. I'm, I wouldn't say plastic surgery, but I just didn't feel it, you know. I, like, I want to get through some process, you know. So, the next uh, khutbah on, at the masjid, I went there. And I remember that day it was nice and sunny. And uh, it was me and one other brother who gave shahada. After I gave shahada, man, the whole masjid was so happy. Everybody was smiling everywhere I turned. I was like, why are they happy, you know? I'm the one who's supposed to be happy. And everything was in a slow motion. And I look up to the masjid ceiling. And I see, like, to this day, I still visualize it. It was so slow. And, you know, there were little, very little stars was coming down from the ceiling. You know, like, it was just unbelievable that day. And uh, that was it. After that, I just, you know, I, I just rocketed up, you know. Uh, next thing, you know, I just got all my jalabia with different colors. I just packed up with my Islamic accessories, you know. I got my books. Uh, kept on going to the masjid. Here and there, I accumulated some knowledge. I mean, I wouldn't call it knowledge, but just information, you know. Uh, I guess it's knowledge. Knowledge is uh, knowing what to do. So, I guess I know what to do right now. And that is to stay away from all the haram things and stick with the good stuff. So... After that, I couldn't believe why the whole world is not Muslim. So I start being in a da'wah mission. I would go there, argue with people, with my family. I would stay up till 2 a.m., 3 a.m., debating and all of that stuff. Oh, man, that was just one big of a, big of a, uh, a mission. So in short, this is what I went through, and uh, Alhamdulillah, this is by Allah's mercy, you know, He took me out of the darkness and put me on the front row of uh, prayer, and uh, Alhamdulillah, I have never been happy in my life. Pretty much, you know, everything that I've been looking for, I found it in Islam. Uh, I'm glad, you know, Alhamdulillah, Islam is free. I mean, what if there was a membership fee? What if it was like, to be a Muslim, you have to pay a million dollars? Can you imagine that? Subhanallah. But I wouldn't care. I would have got like 10 jobs if I have to and pay up and be a Muslim. And, you know, my wish is, is to die as a Muslim. Um, it is like, I mean, I, I feel, I mean... It, I mean, I don't, you know, I don't even deserve it, to be honest, you know. I don't deserve to be a Muslim, but, you know, after everything, Allah just, you know, granted me and answered my dua just like that. And, uh, Alhamdulillah, that's all I can say. Assalamu alaikum. Um, Okay, uh, Jazakallah khair, Barakallah fiq. Uh, I will address these questions, inshallah. First on the text, uh, no, I'm not from Senegal. Uh, originally, I am from Eritrea. That is a country next to uh, Sudan and uh, on top of Ethiopia and East Africa. So uh, that's where I'm from. But uh, I was born in Ethiopia and then I moved to uh, US so over half of my life I have been in America now uh, okay now back to the brother on the mic who asked me the question uh, what is it that that I missed from my previous life to be honest nothing nothing at all man I can't I can't even think actually what I say is how come I wasted all this time I wish I knew about Mus Islam long time ago. That's what I said. I don't miss anything. Uh, everything that I did as a non-Muslim, it never got me any peace, or it never got me uh, the the tranquility I was searching for. 
I experimented. You know, I, I was never really a drinker as far as alcohol goes. I never got up and, you know, uh, for the heck of it, let me get drunk type of stuff. Uh, I mean, alhamdulillah, you know, I come from uh, a good family, so they at least they installed... Actually, I wouldn't say good family, because I uh, associate ev good only to Allah now. I would like to say I come from a nice family. For human beings, I use nice. For Allah, I use good and perfect, you know? So, uh, so you know, my family, alhamdulillah, they installed good morals, you know, don't smoke, don't drink, go to school type of values, you know, you know how it is uh, from, you know, overseas parents, you know. So, I, nothing really I missed uh, from uh, the, the friendships that I had previously, to be honest, I never really clicked with non-Muslim friends anyways. All my friends previously tend to be Muslim, even though they didn't practice, you know, they never, um, you know, the they way, like they say, a bad Muslim is a best individual than uh, the best kufar. You see what I'm saying? So, um, so nothing that I missed previously. Islam, to me, helped me improve and in every aspect, the way I eat, the way, uh, you know, I am clean, smelling good. Not that I smell bad before, but <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, the voodoo and all of that. Um, the way I interact with people, the controlling, you know, uh, my, my anger or what have you. Before, in my previous life, um, I would... You know, if somebody insults me or anything, I would, I would resort to you know fighting them. You know, I would punch somebody in the face, uh, or you know, I would just let him know who I am. You know, but now Islam told me that sabr, you know, to be patient, you know, to to be dealing with people using hikmah, you know, and you know, fighting is like the last last resort. And if I ever fight, I should fight for this. For the way of Allah, so so that's how it is. Before somebody said something wrong to me, bam, you know, real quick. So that changed. So I have changed for the better, you know. Um, as far as my family goes, uh, as far as my family goes, yes. In the beginning, there was a lot of tension. Uh, especially, I got the most resistance from my dad. So I told him, you know, I, when I asked you, he told me just focus and and God, you know, don't worry about religions and Islam is about God. So that's what I did. So he said, but I didn't tell you to be a Muslim. So I said, oh, okay, oh well, it's too late now. I already gave shahada, you know. And uh, what I did with my dad is, I used Quran on him really, because Allah says in Quran, they come and ask you if you want to be saved be a Christian or be a Jew but ask them is Ibrahim a Muslim I mean is Ibrahim a Christian Stafrullah. is Ibrahim a Christian or a Jew tell them no I rather worship the Lord of Abraham so this is exactly what I said and my dad just kept quiet he didn't say anything when I said that you know that was it that 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 took care of like 75% of the, the, the issue right there. So my dad was also saying, you know, uh, like he wouldn't, you know, back home people are very, very uh, big in, uh, in blessing their children or, you know, even cursing people. So my dad was like, you know, pretty much, you know, if you want me to bless you, you have to leave Islam. You know, I can bless you, but you got to leave Islam. So I told him, no, no, no. You know, if Allah blesses me, that's more than enough for me. So that was it. Uh, but now the amazing thing is, <clears throat> uh, two years later, my dad came. You won't believe how much he blesses me now. I was like, wait a second. I thought he said, you're not going to bless me unless I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm Christian. 
So I see a huge change. My dad blessed me like you won't believe. Left to right, left to right. Alhamdulillah, you know. And then uh, my dad also, I found out when he first came, when I, you know, from back home, I opened the door one day and he was praying and he was making sujood. So I was like confused. I'm like, he's praying like a Muslim. So uh, he, my, my dad prays like that. So he wanted to get a prayer rug. Uh, because the one he was praying on was not comfortable, so I gave him mine. But mine has a mosque picture on it, so he didn't like that. So I went and got him a different rug, prayer rug, from Turkey that is really soft but plain. So he liked it, you know, so I gave it to him. And uh, I never thought, I never thought my dad would read Quran. I printed the first five surahs in his language and uh, gave it to him. And he read a couple of, a couple pages and I asked him, what did you think? What do you think about it? And he goes, it talks about Musa and Ibrahim. That means a lot to me, the fact that he read it. So I told him, you know, uh, my dad, it's better to follow the ways of the prophets, not the way of the priests and the pastors. Because the priest and the pastors, they're going to be judged just like me and you. But the prophets, we know either in the Bible or in Quran or in the Torah, they are all the successful people, you know. So, you know, I think that got to him. So, inshallah, little by little, you know, little by little. Uh, my mom is, is also changing. Uh, the first thing she said was, uh, the first thing she said was, I, when I told her Islam is the right religion, because, um, well, uh, say, la ilaha illallah, it talks about, in the Bible, uh, some part, I mean, there are a few parts where it doesn't talk good about the prophets, because the prophets make mistakes and stuff, I guess, that's what it says in the Bible, but Musa and Ibrahim and Dawood, or oh, peace be with all of them, they are mentioned in the Bible, and they are people of the successful, you know? And they never believed Jesus is God, or they never say Trinity. You know, they worship one God. This is what I meant by that. So with my mom, uh, we were once in the living room, and, you know, she was advising us about marriage, who we should be married, you know, to her children. Uh, she said, uh, you know, the the common thing that better this is in culturally religiously these kind of things so I say to myself in my mind wait a second I believe Islam is the right religion what if that girl whoever she comes believes Christianity is the right religion so I told her what about religion because I just told her straight up I told her you know I think Islam is the right religion you know, I always say straight, you know, I never say, maybe if I say it this way, you know, it might sound better or anything. I don't like to sugarcoat stuff. I just say the, 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 just how I feel, just the truth, you know, long as it's not bad things, you know. So she goes, Islam, Islam is a religion where the man marries four wives on top of his wife. He marries on top of, on top of his wife, that's what she said. So I said to myself, well... Right now, you know, which guy, And if you walk down the street and you show him, like, forget four, 50 most beautiful women in the world, just think of this, and you tell him, would you like to marry all these beautiful women? I don't know any guy who would say no. I mean, unless, you know, he's a, a Muslim and fear of Allah and this and that, you know? So I told her, you know, this is not a, a valid reason to uh, disqualify Islam. I was, I'm expecting a, a bigger proof. So she didn't have a proof, so she was not, she was not happy about that. But now, you know, she told me now, you know, she she knows. She asked me, so are you gonna marry a, a woman who cover up, which means like hijab, you know? So I told her, yeah, I I hope so. And then she told me last time, you know, Christianity and Islam, is, we all believe in, in the same God, you know, she told me that. So slowly, she's coming, you know. 
I was going to say, I was tempted to say, no, we don't believe in the same God. We believe in, in Allah, Tawheed, with no partners. Christianity is about Trinity. I was going to say that, but I said, not yet, you know, just slowly, pull the rope slow, you know. So, I just, you know, I told her, you know, we'll talk about it, inshallah, in, in detail soon, you know, that's how I closed it. So, so slowly, you know, alhamdulillah, all of them, I mean, all of my brothers, uh, I have convinced, I have targeted all of them, and all of them have said one sentence that somehow opened them up. One of the guys says, one of, the, one, one of my brothers says, give us time. The other brother, I proved to him, alhamdulillah, that God is not a man, according to the Bible. He's convinced on that. The other brother, he says, don't push too much, he told me that. So, uh, you know, it's just, uh, and one sister, oh, oh, and my sister says, uh, there is a lot of dedication in Islam. She said, she believes that. So all I have to do, you know, be Allah. All I have to do is focus on myself, polish my Islam, be the best Muslim that I can be, you know, and uh, uh, I don't believe just talking and talking, action, I, I prefer with action, you know, so if I give da'wah, it should be action-oriented da'wah, and this is by giving gift, by helping them when they need help, by inviting them for iftar, inshallah, now. These kind of things I must do with Allah's help. And at the end of the day, you know, it is Allah who He guides, it's not me. So if Allah guides them, alhamdulillah. If He doesn't guide them, alhamdulillah. There is nothing I can do. I'm worried about myself, you know, and the Day of Judgment, how I will measure up. And uh, that's how my goal is right now, you know, just to live a life so I can be, so Allah, Allah can be pleased with me. That's how I should do it. The third question you asked me was, uh, what was the third question? Family, if I ever missed anything from my previous life, can you type, uh, I think, La ilaha illallah. Ah, oh, mashallah, how do I feel life? How do I feel? I can't even find a word for you. I smile a lot. Actually, I'll tell you <laughs> what happened. Uh, the first thing I did when I became Muslim was I broke up with my uh, girlfriend. I used to have a girlfriend. Very nice girl, you know? And it is actually my fault because uh, I should... Uh, I just pretty much dipped her. I was like, no, Islam, I can't have a girlfriend. Cut it off, you know? I should have done maybe, I could have gave her da'wah. She could have been a Muslim too, inshallah. You know, I could have done that. But I just bailed out on her, you know? No, 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 I can't. I wouldn't even touch her. If she tried to give me a hug, I was like, no, no, stay away, you know? Because I don't know, I, I don't know what happened to me that time. But, um, um, so she said after I became Muslim, she was like, your face changed, you know, your face is clear. So I was like, alhamdulillah, you know, maybe all that voodoo, you know, cleared it out, you know, but alhamdulillah. So people, um, uh, you know, I smile a lot, um, I'm happy. You might mistake me if you find me down, you know, walking in the street. You might say, wow, what is, what's going on with that guy? Did he get a raise at his job? Did he get married? What's going on, you know? He looks happy. It looks like he gained some healthy weight. I want to eat what he ate. You probably would say that, you know? Alhamdulillah, I'm happy. Very happy, you know? Uh, I'm at peace. I feel like... I don't know how to explain it to you. I just feel complete, you know. Uh, I had I had a family member um, who said, you know, negative things when I became Muslim. And I remember one day I was in the living room with my jalabiya 
and you know, I'm just being me, you know, I'm happy, I'm smiling, alhamdulillah, you know, swimming in, in Islam, and uh, he was just looking at me, like kind of studying me, and I turned around and I caught a, I caught a glance, I, I catch a lot of people looking at me, and when I look at them, they look away, I mean, not just this, this family member, but even in school, uh, and places, like I go to the marketplace where the farmers bring stuff, I go there with my jalabia, people be looking, my friend, he, I put, now I put like this big glasses, you know, like those uh, old, the 70s type of glasses, so I'm like secured, you know, like you can't see my eyes, I'm fine, you know, I'm just in my own world, so, um, so people be looking, and my friend, he be like, uh, scientific mind, people are looking, looking, you know, and I'm like, really? Because I try not to look at people, I just focus on my own thing. But I catch little children staring at me sometimes, you know, and alhamdulillah, you know, kids are so innocent, they don't even worry like, oh, if I see him and he see me, he's going to think this way, that way. They're just innocent, they're just, they're just looking at me. Actually, a couple of, <laughs> a couple of days ago, I was on the highway, this car next to the car that I was in, the guy just was just looking, you know, I'm like, what's going on with this guy, you know, maybe it's the beard, I don't know, so, um, I feel, I feel very happy, and, uh, back to the family member, so he was like, looking at me like, like this guy, he became a Muslim, and he's my family member, he's supposed to be a bad guy, like, terrorist right now, but I see him, and he's happy, and he's just feeling good. What what can it be? He's just looking at me like that look, you know. So when I look when I look back, I caught that that look from him, and I was like, oh okay, May Allah give you Islam too, you know. That's that's all I can say. You know, why don't you try it out for a couple of weeks, and then even after that, if I try to take Islam back from you, you will fight me for it, you know. That's how I see it. Uh, I feel very, very nice, I mean, I, I don't know, I mean, I don't know how else to explain to you, uh, since I have become Muslim, to be honest, a lot of people love me, for some reason, I mean, previously, um, previously the people who used to like me, liked me for the wrong reason, you know, they would, they would be like, okay, if I am, uh, with scientific mind, maybe we can, astaghfirullah, you know, this is just how it was, maybe we can find, uh, we can, we can have a chance with good looking girls, something like this, I had, I had people with that kind of thinking, you know, um, if I am with scientific mind, maybe, things like that, dunya related, uh, benefits, you know, but now, that's not the case, people just, I don't know, the people just uh, are gravi gravitated to me. Alhamdulillah, this is Allah's mercy, you know. So, uh, and me, I, I try to use that to give da'wah, you know. Uh, I'm very active in discussing Islam with people. Um, I ask questions to make them think. So, you know, to consider Islam. Um... You know, I think there's a hadith that if one person becomes a Muslim because of you, it is better than even like imagine the sun. If I give you the gift and the gift is the sun, and instead of the sun, it is better that if one person gives shahada. Uh, there's a hadith that I, I think, I have to verify it, but uh, that's what I, I think, that's what I know. So, you know, I try to, um, to do that. Now, my next plan is, inshallah, uh, to get married and have a lot of children. Like about 24 kids. All of them Muslim, Imam, Hafiz. This is how I want to have. Yeah, 24. I will go for maximum wives allowed. Four, six children per each, if not more. And just trying to take over a huge if I take over at least one area like one state and you know just 
Islamatized uh, the whole area. You know what I mean? No, no. This is this is a uh, this is a blessing to have children. Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to have to have a lot of children. In the day of judgment, Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam will have his ummah behind him, and he will say to the disbelievers, "Look how many we are, and we are believers." You know, China right now is a force to be reckoned with. One billion plus people in this planet. Chinese. They have a huge voice. Can you imagine if a country goes to war with China? I mean, you can't even finish killing them. You know? So, we need to be many. Muslims need to be many in number. And when I say quantity, I don't mean with poor quality. It needs to be with good quality, with good deen. You know, fear, fear Allah and contribute to the goodness of this earth, this society. So, this is my goal. My next goal is to have a lot of children and, uh, you know, to increase my knowledge and deen. To, uh, I need to be fluent with Arabic, so inshallah I'll try to move to an Arabic country and, uh, you know, increase the listening part and then supplement that from uh, Arabic education. And, you know, memorize Qur'an. Uh, I, I just started, you know. I have a lot to go. This is, uh, this is uh, my life right now. Uh, I picked the best names that I can... Well, yeah. I, I picked the best name. All, all Muslim names are really best, you know. Uh, but I picked a very good name that fits me perfect. Um, I picked my middle name about three or four weeks ago um, and uh, my middle name is Muhammad uh, my first name is Ibrahim uh, last name for confidential reasons I have to keep it but you can imagine it is the king in Ethiopia who accepted the Sahabas at that time so everything kind of fit together, you know, alhamdulillah. So um, uh, even the name that I picked, alhamdulillah, I mean, especially uh, the name Ibrahim, I didn't even know anything like that about Ibrahim. I knew very little. It was in a, in a masjid parking lot after I became Muslim. This brother came and tried to take my phone number. So he said, well, now you should have a Muslim name so I can feel comfortable. So when he said that, just something just came out of my mouth and I just blurted out, Ibrahim, you know? And he goes, yeah, 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 I like that. And he wrote it down. So I said, wait a second, who's Ibrahim? I got to go read about that, you know? And when I went home and read the story of Ibrahim and the stories of Prophet, I say, mashallah, it's a good name, you know? It fit me. So I was seeking Allah and Allah gave me Islam, you know. And then I find out after Ramadan, you know, uh, the second, uh, I think, Ashraf, is that what you call it? The second uh, Eid. And I was like, what is this? And they said, they told me, oh, this is when Ibrahim, alayhi salam, when, when he tried to uh, sacrifice his son, but instead he sacrificed, oh, really? After my name, there is a holiday too, mashallah, you know. And then the third one was, I found out Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa had a son. And his name, his son's name was Ibrahim. So I said, mashallah, you know. So three out of three right there. And then my best, my good friend, his name is Muhammad. And I used to be, once I found out about Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa Subhanallah. Did you know Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he sweat he used to smell like musk? That really like got me in my head. I was like Subhanallah, you know. By the way, I saw Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in my dream, uh, which is another story, you know. So, anyways, I used to be jealous about his name. I was like, oh man, you got a really nice name. Uh, so he goes, your name is nice too. So I was like. Maybe in the state of Ibrahim, I should have had Muhammad, you know. So I say, wait a second, I can have that as a middle name. So I say, bam, Ibrahim Muhammad right there, you know. So it's complete now, you know. 
Now, uh, okay, uh, I think I will, I will, t- I will talk about the dream. I, if I tell you everything in one day, uh, you're not gonna have, you're not gonna miss me. <laughs> right? Yeah, so inshallah, I'm gonna give the mic, and, uh, it's getting late too. I have exactly two hours and 45 minutes before Fajr. Actually, uh, a little more than that. Uh, let me, let me, uh, instead of me just being on the mic, let me pass the mic around, you know, share the mic. It's Ramadan, you know. Trying to get Ajr in here. Inshallah, if I give the mic once, it will count like us if I give it two times, maybe. Yeah, inshallah, I will come here. Uh, what should I do? Pass the mic? How about uh, we vote on it? Okay. Okay, you want to hear about the dream, yeah? I understand, I understand. We love Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, and dream and thought or anything, we, we try to see him. So, the, the dream goes like this. It was, uh, it was on Saturday. It was, no, it was on Friday. Friday night. Uh, and that night, I went and spent the night over my friend's house. Uh, over the, a brother's house. Very good brother. And, to be honest, I never spent the night over his house. It was my first day spending at his house. So, um, so, so what happened was, um, and I slept maybe not that long, maybe four hours. So, in my dream, I see, um, two, two people, two guy, two men. And, uh, now, in the dream, the mood is very relaxed, very like, uh, I don't know how to explain, very, very relaxed, you know, it's no stress, no, no drama, it's just pure, you know, yeah, peaceful, exactly, very peaceful, and I believe in my dream that I see Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and with him, I believe it is Abu Bakr, and uh, it is Abu Bakr or it is his right man, his, his the right man. And you can tell Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he doesn't say much, but the way he, both of them were standing up, and the way he is, uh, his demeanor, if you look at both of the people, their demeanor, Abu Bakr is always on a mood of uh, ob- obeying Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He's like What can I do If Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam For example says I need a glass of water Abu Bakr would just go And grab a water And give it to him uh, He it was like And this kind of uh, May Allah be pleased with him I think the way he said is Radihal Radiyanna Anhu Is it When you mention the Sahaba name Radihan 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 Radi Alhu Anhu, yeah, yeah. Radi Allahu Anhum, exactly. Jazakallah, khair. So, uh, so I look at uh, Rasul, and when I see Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is so handsome. You know, to this day, if I have a daughter, I would definitely marry her off to him. Th- this is how, uh, how he looked. Uh, when I see him, he is, uh, he is, he's taller, taller than me. And in, in the dream, I am, I am very, um, like, okay, I'll tell you first of all. Uh, let me finish. So, uh, when I see him, uh, his face, he's not light, he's not dark, he is kind of brown, you know, a little bit browner than me, very nice complexion. Uh, he, it's very hard to describe him. His face looks like um, he's not white. He's not black. He is not Indian. He can pass for um, how not to explain it. He can pass for uh, South South 
Asia, maybe. Let's let me see which country would fit him. Uh, no, not even reddish. I, I, I mean, I wish I could draw the picture, but I can't. So, all I know is he's very handsome. That part is in my mind is registered there. And when you see his face, you just want to be his best friend. You just click with him, you know. So I was just looking at him, and this voice came to me in the dream. Look at him. That's Rasul. That's Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's the Prophet. That's the Prophet. And just, uh, just look, you know. And when I saw him, I just loved him so much. So I just went to him, and I just hugged him very tight, you know. And when I hugged him, I only can, can, can hug him up to his, um, uh, his stomach. You know, he's taller than me. I guess in the dream, like I couldn't hug him on his shoulder or on his neck. You know, I, I only come up to him on his stomach. So I hugged him very tight, and then I cried while I was hugging him. And then there was uh, there was a message that to worship Allah and to not like. Uh, because on the on the, on the dream, the message that I received, I, I believe, was to not go over my limit and put Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam like in a worship form. You know what I mean? It was like you know to keep my distance, like lo love him and obey him, but Allah is Allah. You know, don't don't get involved with. Uh, anything involved with worshipping him type of stuff you know he's a prophet this is this is the message that relate to me in the dream yeah in the middle in the middle of the body so um so also on the dream uh rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam he had a computer and his his uh, email you know uh, his email account was was on so me you know my field is in the computer so um, I went and I, I tried to use the computer, you know, and, uh, I was caught, like, uh, caught up in the, in, in this thought, like, oh man, I can't be reading Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his email, you know, that's like invading his privacy. So what should I do? But Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he looked at me and he said, just go ahead, you know, you can do whatever you want. You know, you can go ahead and use the computer. He kind of gave me the okay, you know. So, so I remember that part. So let me tell you the irony of this dream. Are you ready? Okay. The next morning, I go for Fajr to the masjid after I see this dream. And w after I woke up, I completely forgotten about this dream. I go to the masjid and the masjid is packed full. I look inside, I was like, subhanAllah, I wish it was like this every day. All of them, West African brothers, brothers from Senegal and I guess Gambia, Nigeria, this, West Africa, you know? So we pray together and I start to notice certain things. For example, between the people, people are not connecting shoulder to shoulder, foot to foot. That part was missing. So that raised a red flag. I said, "Okay, something is up," because if the, if, if it was but Sunnah, you know, people who follow Sunnah, they would have followed that part. So after the prayer was done, I asked one of the brothers there, "Salam alaikum, brother. What's going on? What's the event?" And he goes, "Oh, we celebrating Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's birthday." And a couple of days ago. In the masjid, we had a lecture, a halat that it is it is not allowed to uh, to celebrate Rasul Sallallahu birthday. You know, we only supposed to uh, celebrate the two Eid. So soon as the guy says, uh, so soon as the guy says we celebrating Rasul's birthday, I remember the dream immediately. I was like, aha, the dream was a warning for me not to participate on this thing. That was it, you know. 
I never dreamt about Rasul in my life and it just for it to happen right I mean it's just kind of very I don't know this has to be from Allah I mean think about it the next day I go there this happens so so this is what happened and then you know for me you know this is uh, this is the story inshallah part 2 and part 3 and part 4 uh, for other days uh, oh, I mean make dua for me and for the ummah make dua for the ummah not uh, not the, the not the regular dua that's 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 always given because like one sheikh said we keep giving we keep making dua we keep making dua but it, it falls on deaf ears because Allah says in Quran Unless people change the condition that they're living in, Allah will not change it for them. So as Muslims, unless we change our ways, you know, we can't say, Oh Allah, give us this, give us that. No, there is some action, some work that is expected from us. So the dua should be made. Inshallah, Allah gives us the courage. No, it's an ayah, it's in Quran. It's in Quran. Allah does not change the conditions of the people unless people want to change it. For example, if people are drinking alcohol, okay, and they're doing all kind of haram, and then they say, Oh Allah, give us happiness. No, you're not going to be happy because you're getting drunk. And when you get drunk, you get angry. So you got to change that situation first. Come correct first, you know. Uh, so... Uh, I will conclude this with dua, inshallah. Can I make dua, admin? Okay, but it's going to be in English, you know? Because my Arabia, yeah, I need shwe shwe, you know? Anta Arabia kabira, anna Arabia shwe shwe. You know, it's, it's, it's uh, practicing. So, um, um, so here goes the dua. Uh, may Allah give us the courage, the confidence to follow Islam the way it's supposed to be followed. I mean, may Allah bring back, bring back honor back to this deen may Allah put us in a position that we become an example for all human beings may Allah help us so the the disbelievers look at Islam and say Islam is the right deen I want to join too I mean may Allah give us security, peace, and knowledge in the umbrella of Islam. May Allah give us the confidence and the courage to to be walking and to be a model to be to follow the model of Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May Allah take all the tools that make us non-Muslims starting from the razor that we use to shave our beard and look imitation of kuffar may Allah save us from it you know may Allah help our children grow up to be the best Muslims may Allah help us to have our children and us to take key positions in this world so we can beautify Islam the way the Sahabas used to beautify Islam may Allah take the hesitation the worry the stress the fear out of our heart and replace it with all the good characters the Sahabas and Nabi Muhammad had in our heart may Allah help us work as a team a unity and may Allah always help us to keep the remembrance of Jannah and the day of judgment in our mind 
Therefore, our actions can be the right actions. Uh, may Allah save us from just hearing things, just listening things, one ear, one out. But may Allah help us apply what we listen on every lecture and every khutbah. May Allah help us gain knowledge. May Allah help us keep health, good life. And may Allah grant us all the good things that pleases Him. You know, uh, this is my dua. Amin. Barakallah fiqh. Mike is free.